Hello everybody and welcome to the stream. My name is Technomagus and we are on day two of Final Fantasy IV Advance. Uh, when we last left off, we just defeated Scarmaleon and he fell off the bridge and apparently he is not dead because... Surprise! Now, you can actually avoid wasting a turn in this fight by preemptively switching the row in your party, but... Actually, let's see if we can recall something useful. Oh, of course not. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Um... Alright, so basically just pound on Scarmelione with fire. Uh, he is actually considered undead at this point. Okay, I'm not entirely sure what that was supposed to do. Wow, that was pretty sad. They spent all that time casting and casting and casting and they did as much damage as Cecil deals with a single shot. Uh, can't multi-target Asana. Here we go again, and again, nothing happened. I'm not entirely sure what that ability is supposed to do. No, she does not have Asuna. Awkward. Alright, let's just heal. And the Fiend of the Earth is down. It's not a hard fight, especially if you decide to not waste a turn swapping your row. And he's dead. Alright, so in case you're wondering, yes, Cecil is no longer going to be a Dark Knight after this. So we can go ahead and remove all of his Dark Knight equipment to sell later. If we had not removed Cecil's Dark Knight equipment upon changing to a Paladin, uh, we would have lost it forever. Surprise, the mirror. And he Cecil got fishy. Now, in case you're wondering, all that the Dark Knight image does is cast Dark Wave. So, 
technically what you're supposed to do is you're actually supposed to do nothing. You're supposed to sit there and let him run himself out of health. The clues at the top of the screen pretty much tell you to sheath your sword and not attack. So you're supposed to just defend and heal. Also, as a white knight, Cecil gets access to cure magic. He has some basic level uh, white magic that he can use. Now keep in mind, Cecil is a fighter, not a healer, so he is very bad at casting magic. As you can see. And with that, Cecil has become a pally. Oh, hey! Tell her knows magic now. And he also knows Meteor, the ultimate black magic. That's awesome. Uh, no, actually. Um, this is... The, each of the Final Fantasy games, or each of the main nine numbered Final Fantasy games, take place in their own separate world. They have ties to each other, kind of, uh, in that they feature similar monsters, similar locations, similar weapons, but each is its own self-contained story. Now, some of the numbers have had direct sequels, like um, this one had The After Years, which was on the WiiWare, and then Final Fantasy VII had the Advent Children movie, as well as Dirge of Cerberus. Um, Final Fantasy X had X-2. Now, Final Fantasy IV advan or Final Fantasy IV originally came over to America as Final Fantasy II for the Super Nintendo. Like I said, Square has a really weird numbering system. The original two and three never came to America. Uh, at least not until the the Game Boy Advance ports came over. I've never played Dirge of Cerberus myself, but then again, I am not the person you want to talk to if you are a fan of Final Fantasy VII, because it was my least favorite. Alright, so now that Cecil is a paladin... Um, <laughs> oh, you poor deprived child. But uh, now that Cecil is a paladin, consider before we went into there, Cecil was around level 20, and he only had like 300 some health. Now he's at level 1 with over 600, or with 600 health. So he got a significant stat boost. Oh, and actually, now that he's a paladin, all that stuff that I bought back at uh, Mysidia is going to come in handy. Uh. Hmm. Apparently they are considered or the Lilith is considered an undead enemy. Interesting. And Tella learns Meteor, and he can't cast it, because it costs ninety nine MP and he only has ninety. Uh he really can't even cast anything worthwhile because it all costs too much. 
Yeah, whatever. And I think Cecil just gained five levels. Uh, he gained six levels. Because, yeah, being a level one character uh, causes him to... Uh, the enemy's dropping so much experience, he will... You'll, you'll be lucky to have a Cecil under level, like, 15 by the time you exit Mount Ordeals. Alright, so, let's, speaking of, let's go ahead and get out of here. Alright, so we are almost out of Mount Ordeals. But we still have a few more random encounters to go through. So many random encounters. Ah, whatever. Cecil needs the experience. Okay, so now that we are out of uh, the... Mount Ordeals, you can either walk back to Mesidia normally, or if you come down to this little circular forest over here, uh, well, Once the enemies decide to let up a bit. We have a chocobo forest. Now, the way chocobo forests work is you have yellow chocobos, white chocobos, and in a couple of the forests there are also black chocobos. And every chocobo forest has one of these little 4x2 or two by two squares that you can't walk into. That when you talk to it, you smell a chocobo. Um, I actually don't have any Gishel Greens, uh, which is what you're supposed to use, and it will summon a fat chocobo, uh, which you can store your items in. Now, 
having a white chocobo in a chocobo forest is always nice because when you talk to it, it restores all your MP for free. So you can just go ahead and then say, oh, well, let's spam Cure Magic and heal everybody up to full. And then talk to the white chocobo again and refill your MP and oh look, you're back up to full health. And then we'll go ahead and talk to the white or the yellow chocobo. And we have free travel over land with no enemy encounters. Now, once you dismount from the chocobo, it will run away. Very carefully. Now these people who were all being jerks before are suddenly flabbergasted by the fact that, oh hey, by the way, I'm a paladin now, deal with it. So let's go ahead and now, with our massive stock of money, equip all of our new gear. And we can go ahead and sell off all of Cecil's old Dark Knight stuff. Let's see. There we go. Yes, we're a paladin now. Deal with it. <laughs> Yay, it's the Sword of Prophecy. What do you think? An apocalypse is happening. This time of prophecy has come. One track mind, but at least he knows what he's doing. And great, he's leaving me with the kids. Though actually it's not terrible to have these two with us because they're very powerful mages. Uh, 
All right. And actually, before we head out, let's go ahead and pick up some healing items, like a couple extra tents. Hmm. Alright, that should be good. Alright, so off to the Devil's Road. In case you're wondering, there are no random encounters on this. It's just a teleporter, basically. But it's very convenient. Wait, what happened to Kane? Hmm. There's a monk over at the inn. Well, let's go ahead and save first. Something tells me we're about to get into another fight. Oh, see the treasure chest up here? The switch is the cross swords. Stuff we could we could have used earlier in the game, not really necessary right now. Hey, look, it's Yang. And goons. Sure. Let's fight the goons. Um, they apparently like their status effects, but they're dead, so we don't care. And now we get to fight Yang. Sure. Eh. Uh, something tells me that trying to cast mini on him is not going to work. So we'll just beat his face in. Oh, that was some amount of damage. Alright. Time to pull out the big guns. Okay, seriously, how much did he just level up during the time that he was out of the party, considering that he only had, like, maybe 200, 300 HP by the time we left. And Tella is very rapidly running out of MP.
That was a lot of damage. Okay. So Rydia got eaten, and the bard is gone. And Yang's back! Yay! And now it's time for tragic backstory up to this point. How convenient. Give the amnesiac monk the key to the city. And conveniently enough, we get a free rest at the inn, so we don't have to worry about healing up. So let's go ahead and uh, drop a quick save here. I will, I'm going to take a quick break, and when I come back in a few minutes, we will infiltrate Baron. See you guys in a little bit.